in the shadowy wilderness of the southern United States, legends of mysterious creatures have long thrived, passed down through generations around campfires and whispered on hunting trails. Deep within the vast, sprawling bottomlands along the Mississippi River and its tributaries, tales of elusive giants have emerged, hidden in the dense underbrush and secluded wetlands. These stories, some of them centuries old, recount encounters with towering, hairy beings that vanish into the thick wilderness as quickly as they appear. In places where the ground is soft and spongy and the air is thick with the scent of ancient trees, only the most daring venture into the remote areas where, according to legend, Bigfoot still roams unseen but ever-present. Why are we so drawn to stories of the unknown? Why do legends of creatures like Bigfoot continue to captivate our imaginations? The search for Bigfoot is, in many ways, a search for ourselves. It's a quest to understand our place in the natural world, to confront the boundaries of our knowledge. The southern United States, with its rich history and wild landscapes, provides the perfect backdrop for these enduring legends. So buckle up as we embark on a journey into the heart of Bigfoot country. Our adventure into the unknown begins now. Deep in the heart of Missouri, where the Mississippi River carves its way through the land, lies a region steeped in folklore. It's here in the small town of Louisiana, Missouri, that the legend of Momo, the Missouri monster, was born. It was a sweltering summer day in July 1972. The Harrison family, like most folks in these parts, went about their daily chores, oblivious to the strange events about to unfold. Young Terry Harrison, just eight years old, was playing near the edge of the woods when he saw it a massive, hairy creature, easily seven feet tall, lumbering through the underbrush. It had a strange, almost pumpkin-shaped head, and its eyes seemed to burn with an eerie intensity. Terrified, Terry raced back to the house, calling for his older sister, Doris. Doris, skeptical at first, couldn't believe her eyes when she saw the creature standing near the ditch. Panic seized the Harrison household. Edgar Harrison, the family patriarch, grabbed his rifle and charged into the woods, determined to confront the beast that had terrified his children. He could hear the creature crashing through the undergrowth, but couldn't catch sight of it in the dense vegetation. What he did find, however, sent chills down his spine. There, imprinted in the soft earth, were enormous footprints, unlike anything he had ever seen before. They were three-toed and measured a staggering ten inches long and five inches wide. Word of the Harrison family's encounter spread through the small community like wildfire. Suddenly, it seemed everyone had a story to tell. The authorities, initially dismissive of the reports, were forced to take notice as the sightings continued. The sheriff organized a search party combing the woods for any sign of the creature. While they found no trace of Momo itself, they couldn't ignore the overwhelming stench that permeated the air, a foul odor unlike anything they had encountered before. Some residents, convinced that Momo was not of this world, linked the creature's arrival to strange lights seen in the sky a few nights prior. Newspapers from across the country picked up the story, eager to capitalize on the growing hysteria Reporters and curiosity seekers descended upon the town, eager to catch a glimpse of the creature or interview those who claimed to have encountered it. Despite the numerous sightings and the palpable fear that gripped the community, Momo, like most creatures of myth and legend, seemed to vanish as quickly as it had appeared. The sightings dwindled, the newspaper headlines faded, and life in Louisiana, Missouri, slowly returned to a semblance of normalcy. But the legend of Momo lived on. The stories of that summer in 1972 became ingrained in the town's folklore, passed down through generations. To this day, people still whisper about the Missouri monster, debating its true nature.
Deep in the heart of the Arkansas backwoods, where the cypress trees rise from the murky waters of the Sulphur River, lies Fook. Fook harbors a dark and mysterious legend, the Boggy Creek Monster. Stories tell of a large hairy creature lurking in the shadows, seven or eight feet tall with glowing red eyes and a stench that could knock a man off his feet. They call it the Fook Monster, the Boggy Creek Monster, or simply, the Monster. The legend of the Boggy Creek Monster reached new heights in the early 1970s, thanks in part to the experiences of a local man named Bobby Ford Smokey Crabtree. Smokey, a well-respected member of the Fook community, lived with his family in a small farmhouse not far from the banks of Boggy Creek. One fateful night, Smokey's son, Bobby Lynn, encountered the creature while hunting in the woods. Lynn described a massive, hairy beast, its eyes glowing red in the darkness. He found enormous footprints in the mud near where Lynn had encountered the creature, tracks that matched the descriptions given in local legends. Word of the Boggy Creek monster spread beyond the borders of Falk, attracting the attention of curious outsiders and, eventually, Hollywood. In 1972, a low-budget horror film titled The Legend of Boggy Creek was released, loosely based on the stories of Smoky Crabtree and the creature sightings in Fook. The film, shot in a documentary-style format, captured the imaginations of audiences across the country. It painted a chilling portrait of a small town, terrorized by an unknown creature blurring the lines between fact and fiction. The Legend of Boggy Creek became a cult classic, cementing the Boggy Creek monster's place in American folklore. The film's success brought a wave of attention to Fook, Arkansas. The arrival of Hollywood and the ensuing media frenzy had a profound impact on Fook. Some residents welcomed the attention, embracing the town's newfound notoriety. They capitalized on the Boggy Creek monster legend, opening tourist attractions and selling souvenirs. Others, however, resented the intrusion, feeling that the film and the outsiders had exploited their town and its stories. Despite the divisions and controversies, the legend of the Boggy Creek monster endured. The whispers of Bigfoot sightings didn't stop at the Arkansas border. They drifted across state lines, carried on the wind to the sooner state of Oklahoma. Here, in the foothills of the Ozark Mountains, where forests stretched towards the horizon and rivers flowed through rugged terrain, people began to report their own encounters with the unknown. One of the earliest documented sightings came from a woman living near Oak Grove, Oklahoma, just a stone's throw from the Arkansas border. She reported a horrifying encounter, not just with a large, hairy creature, but with the aftermath of its rage. Her dogs, usually boisterous and full of life, were found brutally mauled, bearing wounds that could only have been inflicted by a creature of immense size and strength. As fear and speculation gripped the region, the focus shifted to the town of Muskogee, Oklahoma, here, a chilling encounter unfolded, one that would etch itself into Bigfoot lore and spark a wave of investigations and media frenzy. It began with a 15-year-old boy named Brian Jones. Brian, like many teenagers in rural Oklahoma, was used to the solitude of the outdoors, comfortable exploring the woods and creeks that surrounded his Stillwell home. But what he encountered one summer evening was beyond anything he could have imagined. Standing in his kitchen, Brian noticed a pair of glowing red eyes peering through the window. Curiosity quickly turned to terror as he realized the eyes belonged to a massive, hairy creature standing in the shadows. Before Brian could react, the creature lunged, snatching him up with astonishing speed. The authorities, while initially skeptical, couldn't ignore the physical evidence. Brian bore long scratches on his back, his shirt ripped to shreds. Clinging to the fabric, they found a strand of coarse, dark hair, 
unlike anything they had encountered before. The incident sent shockwaves through the community and beyond. Newspapers across the country picked up the story, dubbing the creature the Muscogee Monster. Theories abounded, ranging from escaped circus animals to misidentified bears, but none could fully explain the events that had transpired. Among those who took a keen interest in the case was Bob Stamps, director of the Sasquatch Investigators of Mid-America Group. As the night wore on, the researchers claimed to have heard strange noises. Heavy footsteps, rustling branches, and guttural growls that sent chills down their spines. Despite their best efforts, the team failed to capture any definitive proof of the creature's existence. Their cameras malfunctioned at crucial moments and the creature seemed to vanish into thin air whenever they got too close. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, Stamps and his team remained convinced that the Muscogee monster was real. And so, the legend of the Muscogee monster lived on, fueled by whispers and speculation, a testament to the enduring power of the unknown. The Lone Star State of Texas, a land of vast plains, rugged mountains, and dense pine forests, has long held a place in Bigfoot lore. From the Big Thicket to the Guadalupe Mountains, tales of strange encounters are woven into Texan folklore. In the summer of 1977, at the Abilene Boys Ranch, two teenagers, Tom Roberts and Larry Saunders, had a bizarre encounter. While clearing brush, they were suddenly bombarded by rocks. They saw a large, hairy creature at the forest edge hurling rocks with force and accuracy. Fear took hold as the boys realized they were facing something far from human. The creature stood at least seven feet tall, its body covered in dark, matted hair. Its eyes, dark and piercing, seemed to burn with an eerie intensity that sent a primal fear coursing through their veins. Tom, struck on the leg by a well-aimed projectile, cried out in pain. Larry, narrowly avoiding a rock that whizzed past his head, knew they had to get out of there. Turning on their heels, they ran towards the safety of the nearby home of Mr. and Mrs. at Newcomb, their hearts pounding in their chests. They burst through the Newcomb's door, breathless and shaken, their words tumbling over each other as they recounted the horrifying encounter. They had seen it, they cried, the creature that people whispered about, the monster that lurked in the shadows of the big country. Louisiana, the land of bayous and cypress swamps, held its own unique place in southern monster lore. Amidst the Spanish moss-draped trees and murky waterways, whispered tales of creatures lurking in the shadows. One such creature, the Rougarou, was said to inhabit the swamps and bayous of Cajun country. Described as a beast with the body of a man and the head of a wolf, the Rougarou was linked to werewolf legends. From the rolling hills of Texas to the shadowy swamps of Louisiana, the southern United States has long been a breeding ground for tales of the unknown. The stories of Bigfoot and other mysterious creatures are deeply woven into the cultural fabric of the region, passed down through generations, often around campfires, their flickering flames casting dancing shadows that mirrored the mysteries they illuminated. These tales serve as a reminder that there are still wild places in this world, pockets of wilderness where the unknown holds sway and the imagination can run wild. They remind us that we don't have all the answers, that there are still mysteries to be solved, secrets to be uncovered, and perhaps, just perhaps, creatures yet to be discovered. As we've journeyed through the heart of the southern United States, we've encountered captivating stories. From the dense forests of Missouri to the murky swamps of Arkansas, from the rugged hills of Oklahoma to the piney woods of Texas and the haunting bayous of Louisiana, the legend of Bigfoot has left its mark. We've heard firsthand accounts from those who claim to have come face to face with these elusive creatures, their voices trembling with fear and awe. We've seen the grainy photographs and shaky video footage, analyzed footprints and examined mysterious hair samples. But the question remains, what is the truth? 
Is Bigfoot real, a flesh and blood inhabitant, or a figment of our imagination? The evidence is inconclusive. Skeptics point to hoaxes and misidentifications, yet the volume of sightings gives one pause. Perhaps the answer lies not in proving Bigfoot, but in understanding the power these stories hold. The South, with its rich history and tradition of storytelling, provides the perfect backdrop for such legends. These stories remind us there are still wild places where the unknown holds sway. They remind us we don't have all the answers and there are still mysteries to be solved. Thanks for diving into the mysteries of Bigfoot with me. If you enjoyed uncovering the legends of the Southern Swamps, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps support what I do and brings more legendary stories your way. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the unknown.